Dear colleagues, as we fortunately have canceled this year's World Congress in Montreal, we thought it would be a good idea to at least share some highlights from the virtual Congress that took place back in February. Before the video starts, I would like to announce that we will open the Symposia submission website in July again for the 2022 World Congress in Taipei, Taiwan. I look forward to seeing you there in person next year. And now please enjoy the video. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel below for free so that you can watch more video in the coming weeks. Thank you. Morning, everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Tong Ping Su from Taipei, Taiwan. I'm very uh, honored to be invited for this plenary lecture uh, at this CIMB meeting. Two individual disorders or shared across disorders, which is still not clear. So they aim to use genome-wide genotype data from the PGC for cases and the controls to examine shared genetic etiology among five major psychiatric disorders like schizophrenia, PD, MDD, ASD, and ADHD. The results showed genetic association using common SNPs was high between schizophrenia and the bipolar disorder. Moderate, moderate association between schizophrenia and MDD and PD and MDD and ADHD and MDD. The low association was found between schizophrenia and the ASD. In the same year, they also published another paper in Lancet Psychiatry. They identified four specific SNPs which are asso associated with a range of psychiatric disorders of childhood and adult onset. These four uh, SNPs uh, locate in chromosomes 3, 10, 12, and 10. And they all account, each one or account for uh, five um, major psychiatric disorders in here. And especially for the uh, CACNA1C, the calcium channel activity genes, they uh, account for uh, bipolar disorder and uh, schizophrenia, and which have pleiotropic effects. That means one gene influences multi-phenotypic traits on psychopathology. The, for, the forest plots for genome-wide significant SNPs showed the same positive direction effects for most of all five disorders. Disorder. This is the case control matched cohort for schizophrenia. So uh, the table is the characteristics of the individuals with schizophrenia with FDIs and the individuals without schizophrenia with FDIs. We found individuals with FDIs with schizophrenia about 256,000 subject and the individual without FDIs with schizophrenia is about 1 million people. So uh, there's no difference between these two groups by age and the gender. And this table is the case control matched cohort. It's not a comparison with the total population. So the first readout is the re relative risk of different psychiatric disorders between FDIs with schizophrenia and the controls. So uh, our, the first readout looks like the FDR S of schizophrenia have 
about 6.4 times greater risk to develop schizophrenia than the controls. And the bipolar, besides that, they still have a 3.3 .3 times greater risk to develop bipolar disorder and the two times greater risk to for the uh, MDD and the 2.7 times greater risk um, uh, male matched cohort we found the BD1 about 13 times greater risk to develop the uh, BD bipolar 1 disorders and then uh, the uh, BD2 this bipolar uh, FDR the, the matched this bipolar disorders, bipolar one disorders for uh, to develop bipolar two uh, about 6.8 times with the risk. However, in the, uh, the BD2 uh, male cohort, they still have about uh, half, about six times for uh, bipolar one and bipolar two equal ratio indicate uh, you can see the next uh, picture uh, next picture is bipolar one uh, fdr bipolar one about uh, 14 times greater risk to develop bipolar one but only about half uh, risk to develop bipolar two however for the bipolar two they have only uh, five to six times to develop bipolar and bipolar two equally. That indicate the bipolar one has greater heritability than bipolar two. In the dose response, those dependent relationships uh, in the bipolar disorders, bipolar uh, the patients FDR, you can see for the, uh, if the FDR of the bipolar disorders have two more uh, bipolars, then the rest of FDR may have about 30 times greater risk to develop bipolar disorders with the cognitive function. Then the next study also by Professor Tu just published in European Psychiatry 2021. They uh, used the uh, MR, MR, MDMR method, the multivariate distant metric regression method to identify all the common neural substrate with connectomic abnormalities across four major psychiatric disorders by the data driven connectome wide association. So they also recruit schizophrenia, bipolar one, bipolar two, MDD, and healthy control. Each group include 100 subjects. And the, uh, they use MDMR first to uh, the overall multivariate pattern of functional activity uh, to establish was established uh, uh, between the, each patient group and healthy control. Then use conjunction analysis to identify common neural regions with functional activities, abnormalities uh, across four psychiatry groups. So look, you can uh, see the uh, common neural substrate with connectomic abnormalities like schizophrenia versus healthy control, bipolar one, bipolar two, and MDD versus healthy control. In the former three groups, they look like the same uh, picture of the uh, 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 common neural substrate uh, differences. So uh, the connectomic disconnectivities, including uh, was identified, including the thalamus, cerebellum, post-central gyrus, and the association cortices in the frontal and the parietal regions.
they also use uh, the other uh, way to uh, to demonstrate the, the the similar pattern of shared uh, functional connectivity abnormalities characteristics by sensory subcortical hyperconnectivity association subcortical hyperconnectivity and sensory association hyperconnectivities like here this is a this is a, a difference between the schizophrenia versus healthy control and you can see the sensory subcortical hyperconnectivity in this red area and also the sensory association hyperconnectivity in this area.